Good morning, and ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2022. Let's give them a hand. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome again to the 2022 commencement ceremony of Fresno Pacific University. On behalf of the Fresno Pacific University Board of Trustees, my bosses, I welcome you to this commencement service, and congratulations again to the class of 2022. Today, we celebrate your achievements in the classrooms, in the Zoom rooms, on the main campus, in Bakersfield, Visalia, North Fresno, and Merced, both undergraduate and graduate students. I also want to recognize our graduating students who are not able to attend the ceremony this morning, but are joining through our live stream. I'm especially grateful to see you graduates here this morning as some of your education and work was done during the worst pandemic in our country in over 100 years. During a global pandemic, your unwavering dedication and approach to your education has demonstrated your resilience, you have overcome, you have persevered, you have remained vigilant and steadfast amidst the twists and turns ups and downs of the pandemic protocols and guidelines, especially during this unexpectedly long season. As we celebrate you graduates today, I want to take a moment to also recognize and celebrate those in the audience who helped to make this day possible. We know that you could not make it to this point alone. There are no great milestones achieved without somebody who has believed in you believed with you, and sometimes believing for you. And I want to make sure that you have the opportunity to thank them. So if you're a parent today in the audience, would you please stand if you're able? If you're a parent, let's recognize our parents. Any siblings in the audience? Any siblings? Yep. Any grandparents, if you're able to stand, any grandparents? And any spouses or children of our graduates, would you please stand? For those of you who are here as family and supporters, thank you again for your sacrifices and your support to help your student achieve this significant milestone. May today be a meaningful celebration and the years to come show the fruit of a life transformed by grace and rooted in love because of the experiences here at FPU. You guys can sit down, sorry. <laughs> I apologize. First time, first time here. <laughs> hmm. I represent an amazing and grateful community of supporters who have invested in your education. And I'd like to thank our amazing staff. It takes a, a tremendous amount of coordination, energy, and thought to transform this arena into a beautiful commencement ceremony. So thank you, staff. I would also like to acknowledge and thank our brilliant and dedicated faculty who have walked alongside you on your academic journey. Students, you know them. They have gone, gotten to know you by name. They have invested in your lives. They sacrificially poured into you and prepared you for your field of influence. They have given you knowledge, but more than that, we hope that you have obtained wisdom to meet the demands of this complex and anxious age. They love you deeply and will continue to pray for you on your life's journey. These faculty are scholars and mentors, advisors and practitioners, women and men who love God and have breathed life into your dreams. 
They've worked especially hard, not only this year, but also the past several years, again, during the pandemic. So faculty, would you please stand so we can recognize you? And graduates, would you recognize your faculty? Thank you, faculty. Students, if you are graduating this morning as a first-generation student, you are the first in your family to receive a degree, would you stand so we can recognize you? So first-gen students. Wow. Wow. Congratulations. If you are an international student, you've come from overseas to study here at Fresno Pacific, would you please stand so we can recognize you? International students. We also want to recognize those who have served or are actively serving in our armed forces. Uh, for those of you who are graduating now and any of those in the audience who have served or uh, are currently serving in our ar armed forces, would you please stand so we can recognize you? You'll also notice that we are a multi-ethnic and multicultural university. We honor and display our diversity in our student population by the wearing of ethnic sashes, which represent our students' culture and ethnicity. A number of you are also wearing a golden medallion hanging on your graduation ground. Many of you are supporting FPU through a gift that you made in honor of your graduation. And today that medallion uh, recognizes you as a donor. If you're uh, wearing a medallion, would you please stand so we can recognize you? Thank you so much. FPU would not exist without the generous support of people like you. Graduates, you've worked so hard to make it to today. You have made us proud. We are better because you have been here. We have been strengthened because of each of you. Each of you has a story to tell, and we pray that as you pray that all that has been good at FPU, the things that are true and good and beautiful, the things that are from God, that you would take those things with you in your lives ahead. Indeed, FPU's mission is to prepare students for faithful and wise service through excellence in Christian education and to strengthen the church and improve society through scholarship and service. As you go forward, I believe that you will arguably be one of the most transformative, powerful, and catalytic generations that we have seen in a long time. You have the anointing of God on you. I pray that God will continue to use each of you to bring his truth and goodness into your families, churches, workplaces, and communities. Now we will have Dr. Sophia Magaganes Sang, Assistant Professor of Biblical and Theological Studies, will lead us in the invocation. Afterwards, Mr. Brian Davis, Campus Chaplain and Executive Director of Student Ministries, will read our scripture. After the scripture reading, our concert choir will lead us in worship through music. Please stand, if you're able, for the invocation and scripture reading. Let us pray. Dear gracious and merciful Heavenly Father, you alone are holy, you alone are worthy of all praise, power, and dominion. We thank you today in the presence of all those celebrating your faithfulness through the diligence and perseverance exhibited by the students graduating today. We acknowledge you as our creator, originator, and sustainer of life. We thank you for your faithfulness to all the students, the families, and the communities represented here today. We pray your blessing be upon each graduate, their families, and their respective communities. We ask that you grant them wisdom and a deeper knowledge of who you are. Where there is a need for wholeness and restoration, I pray that you would make each graduate a blessing, administering your perfect peace 
um, to their immediate families, communities, and into the uttermost parts of the world. May your Holy Spirit be with us today, bringing peace, healing, and restoration to every person represented here. It is in the holy name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading is from Matthew 19, verses 16 through 26. And it says, Just then a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied. There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Which ones? He inquired. Jesus replied, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go, sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. Then Jesus said to his disciples, truly I tell you, it is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. This is God's word. You may be seated.
Thank you, Dr. Wilson and the choir, beautiful. Well, I have the pleasure to introduce the commencement speaker for fall 22. I first met Deputy Mayor Matthew Grundy actually in my candidating here at Fresno Pacific. He was amongst the first few people that I met at my time in Fresno. And it was evident in the first few minutes with him that he loves Fresno. And secondly, he has a deep love for God. And that is the first thing I think that's primary in his life. Deputy Mayor Grundy is a leader in strategic vision and is recognized for his entrepreneurial spirit, creativity, and passion for building organizations. As CEO for Habitat for Humanity Greater Fresno Area, Deputy Mayor Grundy drove exciting expansion projects as well as helped lead strategic vision nationally for 1,200 habitat operations across the United States. Deputy Mayor Grundy is responsible for implementing Mayor Dyer's vision and initiatives. In his current role, he works closely with the mayor and his staff to crystallize the One Fresno mission, both within the walls of City Hall and throughout the community. Deputy Mayor Grundy has expertise in organizational development, real estate, finance, and capacity building. Most importantly, he has a genuine love for God and a genuine love for people. He and his wife Jocelyn and their six children delight most in seeing God's kingdom demonstrated on earth as it is in heaven, in Fresno and in the greater region. Please help me welcome Deputy Mayor Matthew Grundy. Good morning. I'm going to wake you up. It's an absolute honor to be here today on this momentous occasion that is the manifestation of plans that have come to pass. In fact, today I want to celebrate each one of you 2022 graduates, and I want to talk to you for a few moments about plans. You see, you know just as good as I do that you did not get here by accident. Let's go back to the beginning of your academic journey and start by giving credit where credit is due, like Dr. Stevens did a few moments ago. You see, your parents, your guardians and loved ones had to plan to send you off for your first day at school. They planned what you would wear and what you would eat. They planned very intimately the details of your life that would begin your journey. So let's start by giving your loved ones a big hand for their role in helping you get here today. Your teachers over the years, professors, faculty, staff, TAs, administrators, had to plan to wake up and to show up for you. Can you remember your favorite teachers? You remember the worst ones too? <laughs> they all had to plan to show up. Can we give a hand to all of our faculty, staff, educators, administrators once again? But now let's talk about you. Because uh, in kindergarten, you quickly learned how to plan for your activities of the day. You planned what you'd participate in and how and what you'd do at recess, whether or not you would eat your snacks or that oh-so-delicious stick, stick of glue and even crayons. Some of them are still sitting here in the crowd today, guys, those crayon eaters. Don't smile too hard, you'll give yourself away. But fast forward, and over the years, you planned what friends you would hang out with. You began to plan what sports, clubs, music, arts, and other extracurricular activities you'd participate in. And to get here today, you had to plan who would be the best person to partner with for group projects. And you try to stay away from those who were the dead weight. You guys know who they are. 
You planned and then executed thousands of hours of homework, sat through hundreds of hours of lectures, late night studying for test taking and exams and making plans to succeed on your finals, which you ultimately did, that led you here to this day. Give yourselves one more hand. Because, yep, you did it. You, 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 all of you, you did it. And this moment is a key moment to remember what good planning, when executed, can yield. And I want to pause here to celebrate everyone, and I mean everyone in this place, one more time because we cannot give them enough hand. Let's celebrate everyone, not just the graduates, but those who helped you get here today by virtue of the great plans. In the immortal words of the A-teams, John Hannibal Smith, he said, I love it when a good plan comes together. But my question to you today is, what happens when plans don't work out? By a show of hands, has anyone in this entire building ever had a plan not work out? Keep those hands raised. I want you to look around. For those who have their hands raised, it means they're human. For those who don't have their hands raised, they're a liar, they cheated on their finals, and they're cheating in life. <laughs> I'm just joking. But I'll be the first to tell you that in life, plans don't always go the way you want them to. I remember early in my academic career, in my life's journey, when my mom was diagnosed with a trio of illnesses lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and shingles at the same time. She got down under 100 pounds and was given a year to live bedridden. I remember around that same time, my dad, who was a hardworking man, was laid off after 30 years of employment. We went poor keeping mom going. And as a result, my junior and senior year of high school, my family and I were homeless. I remember when we thought we had plans together because we finally got ourselves a car when a drunk driver hit my dad while he was driving on a freeway overpass and the car tumbled down, was totaled, he had to be cut out by the jaws of life, airlifted to Long Beach Hospital for brain surgery and was never quite the same. You see, I know, like you, what it means when plans don't actually work out. And life has its way of throwing you twists and turns, but by God's grace, I'll tell you, I made it off to college, and I sat here just like you one day, able to graduate, amen. But I still had plans after graduation day. I planned to start a real estate development company, which I did. But unfortunately, those plans didn't quite work out either, because in 2006 to 2008, this thing called the Great Recession happened, and I lost everything. I remember with my new wife, right around this time of the year, my in-laws were visiting for the first time, and late at night, I heard a pounding at the door. It was the repo guy coming to get my car because I had gotten behind on payments. Plans weren't working out again. But that's okay, because I've got good news. You see, in Jeremiah 1.5, God says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Not only did he know you, he said he set you apart. You see, before all your loved ones knew you, before your mother knew you, before you knew you, God knew you and had plans for you. And in Jeremiah 29, 11, later he goes on to say, for the plans I have for you are for good. See, if you're wondering what those plans are, he goes on to say these plans are to prosper you, not to harm you. He said they're plans to give you hope and a future. If you've ever had a question about the plans, boy, I've got good news. His plans for you and you and you and you and me are for good. Yeah, those plans are for good even when they don't look like they're working out. I mean, my story is not unique to the human experience. Has anyone else in here ever have life happen? Show me your hands. 
Look around. You see, in a few moments, you're going to walk proudly across this stage in celebration of plans that were well executed. But if we were to also see some of the things that you have walked through, and even some of the things you're currently walked, walking through as you cross this stage, we might recognize that everything may not, by our appearance, be going to plan. But a great man in my life, my dad, when he was alive here on this earth, he told me, Matthew, hindsight is 2020. And in 2022, I'm here to tell you that it's still true. His words that hindsight is 2020 are still true. You see, if I wasn't homeless, I wouldn't have had the experience and build the necessary compassion needed to one day take the job as CEO for Habitat for Humanity Greater Fresno. And without that experience at Habitat, it would not have prepared me for the day when a stranger named Jerry Dyer would one day reach out to me asking me to join the city as deputy mayor to lead the city's housing strategy. I'm here to tell you that your mess is meant to become your message, that your test is intended to become a testimony, that one day you would stand here just like I am today, telling a group of strangers that yes, God's plans are for good. Over time, I've learned a few things about construction. Sometimes you see construction sites too when you're in the community. On these sites, it can look a little strange. I mean, there are mounds of dirt, piles of wood, loud sounds, dust in the air. I mean, it can look like utter chaos. But in the chaos, there is a person, a head planner, the general contractor that knows exactly what's going on. It actually is in chaos. And over time, underground wiring and plumbing happens. The foundation is laid, the framing goes up, the roof is set, the sheetrock is fixed, the fixtures go in, the paint's applied, and the house is finaled. You graduates are being built into beautiful edifices. And even when it looks like chaos, because things will not always go to plan like today, just know that there's a great planner, a general contractor that has the plans, and they're for good. Hindsight is 2020. And Romans 8, 28 tells us all things. Say it with me, graduates. Say all things. All things means all. And all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. All of them. Sure, we will make plans. Today is evidence of a good plan coming together. But the key, listen up, this is it before I leave. The key is not that everything will always go to plan like it will today. No, the key is to stick with and to know the planner. His name is Jesus. I salute you, class of 2022. I look forward to seeing his good plans come to fruition, not just for your life's sake, but for the sake of our world and the sake of this city. Congratulations. Salute. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, inspiring words for not just the graduates, but for all of us. Our mess, your mess, becomes our message, and the test becomes part of our testimony. So thank you. Once again, Deputy Mayor Matthew Grundy. And now Dr. Jeff Wilson will come and lead us in a congregational hymn. Dr. Wilson? find the words for May the Mind of Christ in your programs, and I'm going to ask you if you'd stand and join us in singing.
be seated. Fresno Pacific University is a Christian university known for academic excellence, innovative programming, and spiritual vitality. Students from throughout the San Joaquin Valley, across America, and around the world attend Fresno Pacific. The mission of the university is to develop students to engage the cultures and to serve the cities through excellence in Christian higher education. The Board of Trustees of Fresno Pacific University has the responsibility of ensuring the university effectively pursues its mission. It is a real honor and an enormous responsibility to serve as the chair of the Board of Trustees and seeing all of the graduates before us today is what makes the demands of that job worthwhile. We also have several of our trustees with us here today. I'd like you to stand and be recognized. Thank you for your faithful service to the university. Graduates, I would like to extend my congratulations on behalf of the Board of Trustees for this major milestone in your life. We pray that God will continue to lead and bless you as you pursue your goals. Congratulations, Class of 2022. Here they are, magic words. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science please stand? <laughs> President Stevens, Upon the completion of their course of study and upon the recommendation of the faculty of Fresno Pacific University, I am pleased to present these women and men for the degree of Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science. Their studies in the liberal arts, sciences, and professions have prepared them for careers and leadership in their chosen professions in their communities, and in their churches. They are prepared to serve both God and humanity in this world. Thank you, Dr. Copeland. By virtue of the authority vested in me as president by the Board of Trustees and on the recommendation of the faculty who, who have taught and evaluated you and modeled the Christian faith for you, I confer upon each of you the degree Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science as appropriate to your program of study with all its privileges and obligations. Joining me in welcoming the graduates as they receive their diplomas will be Mr. Josh Wilson, Chair of the Board of Trustees. Graduates, please be seated. Mr. President and Madam Provost, I present to you the candidates from the School of Business. Jasmine Marie Cruz. Natasha Michelle Aguilar. Charles E. Jeffress III. Shireen Estrada. Emily Munoz. Alisi Marquez. Matthew Martinez. 
Joaquin F. Hobdi. Sienna Mayfield. Landon G. Goldsboro. Andrea Wainscott. Jorge Eduardo Davila. Nicholas R. Briscoe. Juan Cervantes. Melissa Murphy. Brianna R. Fishinghawk. Christian J. Mulrooney. Leanne West. Edward A. McKelly. Paula P. Cha. Lucero O. Fernandez. Sarah R. Flores. Nora Cabasa. Audrey Tubbs. Hector J. Wilkinson. Marissa A. Madrigal. Christy Ann Onindia. Selena Malali. Jose E. Saldana. AJ Julian Cromer. Gerardo Antonio Huerta. Heather Bustamante. Alfred L. Carrillo. Tanya Simon. We congratulate the graduates in the School of Business. Mr. President and Madam Provost, I present to you the candidates from the School of Education. Brianna Mirabojic. Did we get the wrong cards? Okay, Naomi Coronado. Daisy Gonzalez. Isis Rata. Alicia Castillo Lopez. Crystal Atterbury. Maria T. Hernandez. Marissa Danielle Felix. Bailey Marie Meister. Jason Davila. Makaya Ariana Branson. Olivia Chavez. Brianna Hovila. 
Laura Maya. Anna Quisada. Desiree Lee. Eliana Espinoza. Selena Grace Bustos. Diana Lynette Adreno Ramos. Alejandra Jimenez. Giselle Limos Corona. Michaela Machana. Miriam Alvarado. Edith Camarina. Amber Weiser. Kylie Valdez. Nikki Martinez. Deja Young. Timothy L. Thompson. Blanca L. Alvarez. Linda Angelica, Angelica Munoz. Joseph Anthony Damian. Kylie Nan Siegel. Mariah Costa. Cost D. Robinson. Roxana Cheeler. We congratulate the graduates in the School of Education. Mr. President and Madam Provost, I present to you the candidates from the School of Humanities, Religion, and Social Science. Nathan C. Olson. Harjop Singh. Amanda Jean Hanston. Andrea Hernandez. Rebecca Lawn Friesen. Alejandra Reyna. Fernando Martin Yanez. From the School of Education, Brianna Marabojok. Brenda Sanchez. Marisol Rason. Jovi Dai. Alicia R. Quintana. Griselda Morales. Esmeralda Zamora. Michaela Adams. 
Maria G. Colleen de Baez. Lizette Medina. Fatima Marie Ramirez. Renessa Lowen Schmidt. Melissa Aguirre. Kiara Soergo. Sophie Underwood. Cynthia De La Rosa. Anne-Marie Kuhn. Monica Trujillo. Lakin Wiegas. Erica Espinosa. Tiffany Terry. Lorina Fernandez. Claudia Valencia. Lisbeth Mondragon. Chant Foy Kumbai. James Ware. Martin J. Pantoja. Faustino Mendoza. Sienna Onsuldoa. Eduardo Casares. Marnie G. De Bardeleben. Myra Alexandra Chavez. Eileen D. Kayabyab. Jennifer S. Gonzalez. Kylia S. Dijon. Raven Douglas. Brenda M. Beltran. Julian R. Alcarez. Micah S. Mitchell. Jessica Baron Ponce. Amanda Birch. Gabriela Carrillo. Araceli Olea. Lachelle C. Solis. Ruth Calderon Franco. Crystal Marie Molina. Sandra Emerson. Luke M. Colvard. Leandre McBride. Nathan B. Loisica. Yadira Covarubias. Jonathan De Leon. Rinaldo Melgoza. Veronica Castro Munoz. Luz M. Lopez. Do that one again. We'll do that one again. She deserves it. Luz M. Lopez. Gabriel C. Avia. Yeah. 
Samantha M. Leone. Renee L. Lieto. Melissa A. Corona. April L. Ornelas. Cecilia C. Montez. Crené Harris. Carissa Canevelbard. Perla M. Flores. Gracia Mendoza. Yvette A. Ibarra. Adan Tapia Jr. Giselle G. Shavira. Hailing Yesenia Barbarena. Connor M. Dodd. Umberto Espinosa Jr. Sofia G. Caballero. Edith Figueroa. Taylor N. Ross. Jamie N. Rocha. Liliana Leon. Kenya J. Hernandez. Pepper L. Briones. Stephanie Torresias. We congratulate the graduates from the School of Humanities, Religion, and Social Science. Mr. President and Madam Provost, I present to you the candidates from the School of Natural Sciences. Gerald H. Santos. Roberto Lopez. Caitlin I. Kirkman. Mate Garzon Sanchez. Cecilia Ceja Lopez. Taurino Ramirez. And Cindy M. Cardenas. Again, I would like to thank the university staff who planned and executed the commencement ceremonies today and express my appreciation to the faculty, administrators, and trustees who gave their time today. Now, will the bachelor's degree graduates please stand? I love it. I love a good party. 
As a sign of your new graduate status, please move your tassel from the right side of your cap to the left where it remains for the rest of your life. If you ever forget which side your tassel goes on, remember that you wear it on the left side over your heart to remind you of your alma mater. So please be seated. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts, Master of Science, and Master of Divinity please rise. President Stevens, on behalf of the faculty of Fresno Pacific University, I am pleased to present these women and men. They have completed intensive graduate studies and have demonstrated their mastery of advanced areas of specialized knowledge. They are prepared to serve both God and humanity in this world, and I present them to you as worthy candidates for the degree Master of Arts, Master of Science, and Master of Divinity. By the virtue of the authority vested in me as president by the Board of Trustees and on the recommendation of the faculty who have taught you, evaluated you, and modeled the Christian faith for you, I confer upon each of you the degree of Master of Arts, Master of Science, and Master of Divinity as appropriate to your program of study with all of its privileges and obligations. Graduates, please be seated. Mr. President and Madam Provost, I present to you the candidates from the School of Business. Jamar Hugie. Yeah, right. Gerardo G. Lemus. Richard Avila. Valerie Irma Espinoza Ronk. Diana Larios Alcazar. Brittany Danielle Owens. Christy Sims Jefferson. Kyla A. Richardson. We congratulate the graduates in the School of Business. Mr. President and Madam Provost, I present to you the candidates from the School of Education. Abigail L. Longoria. Patricia Lynn Robillard. Suzanne Ocampo. Jordan Marie Bradley. Madeline DeLuca. Kayla McElvey. Juliet Alvarez. Yeah. 
Heather Doyle. Chloe Castro. Alejandro Travina Perez. Genesis Marlene Flores. Carmen Elaine Gonzalez. Jeff Stepro. Alan Lee Spivey. Nefrit Ball. Rajneet Sehota. Scott Feistel. Mariana Gonzalez. Harlan Elric. Garrison Patrick Bennett. Joel Garcia. Edward Boyd Schneider. Andra Watlin Booth. Chris Finley. Akika Hopkinson. We congratulate the graduates in the School of Education. Mr. President and Madam Provost, I present to you the candidates for the School of Natural Sciences. Richard Angelo K. Javier. Marie Celine Roque. Hong Bunsi. Gurpreet K. Sidhu. Sunit T. Burhe. Stephanie Rose Lau Rollins. Tisha Klinkenberg. Yvonne A. Reed. Chinoso Mba. Irene Nicholas. And Tatiana Alderman. We congratulate, we congratulate the graduates in the School of Natural Sciences. Mr. President and Madam Provost, I present to you the candidate from the Biblical Seminary, Jacob R. Wood. We congratulate the graduate of the, of the Biblical Seminary. Well, graduates, you did it. Congratulations. And now comes the time for the most important part. Uh, at the end of the ceremony, you'll be exiting down the center aisle and the line will split. This is your first post-graduation test. 
Those of you sitting on my left will go out the south, or excuse me, the northwest entrance, and those on my right will be going out the northeast entrance. Now you can do it. And uh, as you leave, you're going to be met by faculty, and after that, you'll be given your wildly popular <laughs> FPU license frame. To our gathered guests, family, and friends, we ask uh, that you do not come on to the floor, but rather meet your graduate uh, at the north entrance where you first came in. At this time, would you all stand, please, and gentlemen, remove your caps for the benediction. And graduates, if you'd like, I invite you to hold your hands out in front of you to receive this benediction. Graduates, the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ to go into your professions with the courage and the creativity of your creator. To go into your communities and neighborhoods following the rough resurrection road of your redeemer. And then to go into your culture and every culture singing the sweet and the savory songs of your sustainer. Go to the ones you love and to the ones nobody seems to love. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen.